Monday morning recap. Both feeling a little bit, still a bit snoozy from the weekend, Dean. Absolutely, absolutely. I always have a, I always enjoy my my weekends, you know. Oh, mate, tell me about it. I tell you what, I did enjoy. I enjoyed fight camp on Saturday. I think I'm right in yeah. saying every every single fight on fight camp on Saturday was decided by stoppage, which oh, is really, as a boxing really fan that. that what you want it. promoter's dream, isn't it? Ebony Bridges come out. Bet Connolly was supposed yeah, yeah. to be this next level test. Blows it away in two rounds, three rounds. Um, uh, Mark, uh, Mark Bennett v. Alan Babich, ridiculous. <laughs> Nick Webb, Fabio that. Wardley, over in a round. Galahad Dickens, Johnny oh, Fisher. Really versus really Dennis well. <laughs> oh, just, do you know what I mean? Just absolute wars, a lot of them. But I think um, we've got to start, we, if you're on here, we've got to start with the heavyweights. We were just talking about Babbage Bennett before we came on, and I stopped you. I said, "Say what you're saying," because it was, it was gold dust. Alan Babbage yeah, has yeah. battered Mark Bennett, no, but listen, you wouldn't know it you... because he never went down. He never stopped coming. He, he just took it. Everything. It, 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 it was like a Rocky film. Now he's a solid campaigner. What a tough guy. Probably too tough for his own good, and his corner had to save him in the end. Um, but you know, also Babbage. Babbage is learning. Um, but what I was saying is. You know, these guys, man, they need to invest in the body a little bit more, man. He was really, really headhunting. He was going to the bodies at times. He was going to the body at times, but I don't think he could have invested a lot more and put a, a lot more, you know, more, more girth into them body shot, a lot more belief because them headshots he was swinging for all his might. I felt like he could have touched the head and came downstairs to the body um, and broke him down a little bit because he was breathing out his ass, Bennett. And, you know, some obviously the headshots, some guys are just too, too tough and they've got tough heads and they'll be able to take punches all night. And that's what Bennett was doing. He was taking punches all night and and even you could see he was hurt. He was, he was determined to go out like, on his shield and try and see the final bell to make some form of a statement, you know what I mean? And I know yeah, yeah. Uh, the Savage was trying to equally make a statement, but I feel like these young guys, man, they need to invest in, you know, a little bit more body work and being, uh, you know, you know, a bit more calcul calculation with what they're going to do. You know what I mean? Because he was doing some nice stuff. He was touching soft, soft, soft. Then he could have dropped off whap, whap, and whipped the body shots in a little bit more mean. Because yeah. even when he was doing the, the uppercuts, even coming off them, he could have gone back to the body. But there was times he was firing such big shots to the head. It, um, Bennett's hands was up blocking and he left his body open numerous occasions where he could have, he could have gone even left or he could have gone even right. Um, but look, it's easy for me to say that on this side of the fence, but I yeah, understand yeah. boxing. I like boxing. Not everyone's a body puncher, but I feel like, you know, uh, like something Andre Ward said, you know, when you hurt him to the head, you go to the body. When you hurt him to the body, you go to the head. So you give him something, you trick them out of position. This is chess. So normally you've got to give something to make them believe, to sell them the dream, and then you go yeah. to the body. You know, a little touch upstairs, touch upstairs, crunch. You know what I mean? And I think uh, if, if, if Savage did that um, in there, I think he would have had a, you know, he would have had a, he would have, he would have had a good knock. He would, have, he, would have, he would have at least, you know, I think maybe a drop to me. But saying that, like I said, we've got to give credit to Bennett. He was a tough, tough campaigner. And listen, he played his part in there because he was punching back and he caught the Savage with some um, real good big shots as well. So one thing we can say, the, the, the Savage can take shots, even though we know that anyway, um, that Bennett looked like, Two sizes of the savage as well, to be honest. As well. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that was another thing in there. Um, but look, Savage moves on eight and all, eight KOs, what a record. And he, he just continues to campaign and cause cause terror. Let me just say, I text Mark Bennett on Saturday, uh, Saturday night after the fight, and uh, he replied saying, um, that he was obviously gutted how it ended. That's the game he was in. I think he wanted to carry on going. His core, I like think he's got a sore head, mate. Did he tell you that? Core, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, but I, you know, read between the lines. He's definitely on two paracetamol a day for the next couple of weeks. But um, <laughs> I think he, um, yeah, like, like you say, the fact that he was throwing back, it showed that he, you know, he was obviously still of mind yeah, yeah. Uh, of sort. Yeah. But um, the other big heavyweight fight of the night, let's have a look at that. Fabio Wardley, Nick Webb. A bit of a strange stoppage, if I'm honest. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, I've seen a lot of people saying the ref shouldn't have waved it off, but at the same time, I didn't see too many complaints from Nick Webb. He was very quick to come out on social media and say, look, better man won. So, 
I don't know. Perhaps it hurt. Perhaps Wardley hurt him a little bit more than we maybe thought just by watching it from this side of the fence. I don't know. Look, we, you know, uh, Fabio's sharp. He's explosive. We know he can punch. His record shows that he can punch. Um, I don't know if the fight was in Webb. I'm not going to lie. I did expect a bit more of a sterner test um, because on the last card, he'd done really good and beat a guy, one of Dillian's guys also. Um, and that guy was a stellar amateur as well, had a, a great amateur record, came into the pros, undefeated, and he beat him. And I thought he might have been a sterner test coming in, big old lummox. And um, I thought he would have, you know, given Fabio some things to think about. Um, and then, like, like, he went down. But I think a lot of these refs at the minute, there's a lot of things being questioned about refs in the UK um, and stopping fights prematurely or even not even giving some of the guys... You know, because this is a gladiator sport. We must remember that. You know what I mean? So you, I understand you're in there to protect these guys, but you should be able to give them the chance to go out there and earn their pay and give the fans what they want to see. Because people come and pay money to see these guys and tune in um, and download apps like The Zone to pay to see these guys fight. So he should have been able to give an opportunity, stand an eight count. Like you said, from from looking where we looked at, but it's like, it's, like I said, it's on this side of the fence. It's easier to look and say, okay, oh, it looks like, you know, we don't know how hurt he was. Only he knows how hurt he was. But from the from our side of the fence, I think that the ref should say to them, you know what, I'm going to give you a standing account and give you the opportunity to defend yourself and see how it goes. But I'm watching you. If I don't see anything, I'm going to stop the fight. Those are the kind of things we want to start seeing with these referees, not just waving things off and very far. Even the Conor Ben fight with the other kid that time, yeah, that kid is known... Yeah. Yeah, everyone knows how strong and sturdy he is in the punch. And he's, he's taken on all the biggest punches in, 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 in world boxing. And he didn't get the credit that he deserved to be able to. And his, his faculties were all there. I know it was big shots unanswered, but come on, man, rest. They've got to step up to the plate and take accountability and do their homework and due diligence. Not just come in and riff on that. We've got to give them, we've got to know if there's guys who are more tougher and durable than others, you should know that. That's your homework to do your work. To I remember an interview with Kenny Bayless talking about Tyson Fury and talking about other fighters and knowing them and knowing which ones are more durable and which one can take more punishment than others. And, and being in the sport, he he reads the game so well. I mean, our English guys got to step up to the plate and try and do the same thing. You can't just stop it on the work rate because, you know, he, he weren't, his legs weren't wobbly, that guy, Vargas, in that fight and so on. But it was a great win for Connor. But going back, I think there's a few ones over the last few weeks that have been like that. But look, credit to the guys that won. And, um, you know, they move forward. But I don't know. I don't know. We, we, it's going to be one of them, minute. Only um, Nick Webb knows what was going on in his mind and how he felt. So it's a shame. To borrow, to borrow a, a paragraph from the football world for a minute, the, the, the refs are almost being consistently inconsistent. And I don't, I don't want to apply... Mm-hmm more pressure to them because it is a, it's a horrible job, right? It's a, it's a thankless job. It's an unforgiving job, etc. You know, we, we saw it the other week. Would you rather go 10 seconds early or 10 seconds late? There's, there's, there's a big difference mm-hmm. there. Um, do you think, given that football, and I know we try, we you know, there was a lot of jokes at the time and it's still in a trial phase in the football world, but they brought in VAR, this idea of playing it back. Now, I'm not suggesting a fighter should be allowed to recover once the, the knockout's been waved off. But do you think there's something there for like maybe a referee once he's waved the fight off? If the fighter is protesting it, so I if it's not an out cold or the corner doesn't agree or whatever, is that should there be an opportunity for the ref to or the a VAR a ref in the back or even at a different location to watch it back on the camera and say yes I agree with that decision, or or do we just have to trust the man in the middle? Yeah, there is, there is some scope for that. I think there is something for that. But it's like you say, what that does is, though, it does leave time for the other person to recover. In You know, because like, if you're counting on the 10, it was the 8 or 10 count, um, and then that person recovering. Because some people recover quite quickly, you know. Uh, but some, yeah. there's just when you get a clear knockout, then it's a clear knockout. They, you know, they still won't be recovered, even if they wake up and they're, you know, back steady on their feet and so on and forth. But um, yeah, there is. I think there's some synergy for that. That that could, you know, play a part at some stage. You know, it, it, everything evolves in time because there is dubious stoppages. You know, in time we might find that people might start saying, "Well, look, let's look to some of the the stuff we have to use and maybe use these kind of things 
so we can get past human error, you know what I mean, or and things that are there's oversight on. So I don't know if it will ever happen, but you know, there's a possibility for one, one stoppage on the night that wasn't dubious. We'll move to the main event. Kid Galahad was just dominant over Jazza Dickens. I mean, I think yeah. a lot of people probably gave Jazza the first round and then mm. not a lot after it. Um, Kid Galahad. He, he got- yeah, it was a boxing lesson, really. It wasn't nice to see, man. I saw him, he was lunging and battered and bruised. He's a warrior, man, anyway, you know. Um, he went out yeah. there and put it all on the line, man, you know. That's what you get with uh, Jazza. And we saw, you know, he stuck in, he st- he stuck in there as long as he could. Um, but, you know, Kid Gallon is a great talent, man. He's, he's quite funny. Me, <laughs> I was in Vegas with him. He's always calling me out. Me and he was always having a little... Shadow box, and he's like, Oh, come down, we'll give it a spot. You know, them little short man, they're the nasty little kids who give you them nasty body shots. What I'm talking about, and try and get you out of there. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, they, and he's, a fit, he's a fit little son, so yeah, it's quite funny. But, um, now you know, congrats to him and uh, commiserations to uh, old Jazza man, he'll come back. You know, what I mean, he's been around the block and he's you know, he's done a f- some good stuff in the sport of boxing, and he's fortunate there's not a lot of guys get to compete and win some of the stuff he's won, so he should be thankful. But, you know, Kid Gallagher's just a special talent and that's why he's the, the champion still. Of course, I think um, the card as a whole, you know, delivered better. one of the most, one of the most highly anticipated and one of the one of the, the, the most delivered cards, if you like, that, that in, in recent times I can remember. Every fight was just mm-hmm. action. You know, there, there was no boring fight. There was no easy fight. Credit to Johnny Fisher and Ebony Bridges who, who did what they had to do as well against good opposition you know it wasn't a title fight it wasn't an ex you know exposure or anything like that it was just um they had you know they've got to get those names on the record they've got to build themselves up and they, they did the job well just quickly mm-hmm. dean this weekend the card maybe not as many big names on it as as last week i think that's probably fair to say but the mm-hmm. top of the bill who actually for me cool is is the best fight of the whole fight camp um that is a real serious fight yeah he he was a golden contract. People actually know what he's about. That it's just it's fight. It's a firefight all over. Mm. Well, obviously I know uh, Wetz has obviously got Virgil Hunter now as his trainer in the corner and so on. Um, let's see what they've been working on. You know, it's going to be interesting to see the style. Maybe his his defense is something which had, in the past had maybe let him down. He needed to be a little bit tighter. Um, but his his attacking prowess is. He's unquestionable. His shot selection, how he does his stuff, but um, he, he sometimes tends to give away shots. But against this Belotnik, you don't want to do that because this kid can punch. Um, and we saw what he's done to a few of our other guys on this show. <laughs> you know, what I mean? he's yeah. come and bashed up a few kids, uh, uh, you know, along the way. But um, it's definitely a tough fight, man. You know, Gwats is my guy. He's from South London, Croydon, um, and he's always been a menace. I used to spy him back in the day. So it's quite mad. Um, really? You know, we always, yeah, yeah, we always just spar, and he was strong then as well. Uh, Jimmy Manwa, uh, me, Dill, Waxy, Sinclair. There was a few of us that we used to be um, at Jimmy Manwa's gym in Croydon. So we used to do a little, little spar. I used to love going to the body as well, but he was strong, that little sucker. And he kind of digged me a couple of times. And I, I, I tried to give him a bit more welly back, you know, like I, I, I find with these guys, because they, if they're sharper and faster, I try and Put them off and give them a bit of friendly persuasion with a bit more, a bit more power punching yeah. back. But he was walking through everything. He was on it. He was just like, and he, and he's mean. He loves going to the body. But yeah, big up Watsy man. I hope he does well Saturday night. Wish him nothing but the best. And I mean, it's a tough fight. He's in for a tough, tough test. And I know he had one before against the other kid from uh, Croatia. That was a brilliant fight. Both of them damaged their eyes. And he got the stoppage. Um, but let's see if he's improved. Let's hope there's some improvement because he's got. Um, you know, Virgil then, Virgil's, you know, quite astute and uh, obviously he's known for having Andre Ward and building him up to be unbeatable and to retire, just unbeatable, <laughs> you know. Once once he gets past Belotnik, assuming he does, because I don't think it's a foregone conclusion by any stretch. No, no, we definitely, don't, assuming, we definitely don't want to do that. Assuming he does, let's say he does, that light heavyweight scene, we've said it loads of times, we've had Lyndon Arthur on here a few weeks, uh, we, Anthony Yard still there uh, kicking around. I think that's a great fight. Even though Anthony Yard maybe got exposed a little bit from a boxing sense by Lyndon Arthur, 
for power, Anthony R versus Joshua Boazzi is a great fight. But then, you you know, Callum Smith stepping up to light heavy. Um, Craig Richards, even Sha- Shaq and Pitt is still in that mix. There's so mm, many fights yeah. at light heavyweight. I just, for British boxing especially, it's just, it's unbelievable. Yes, the, the, this, that division is just stacked. Like you said, you've named all a lot of the top boys up there. You forgot Dan Aziz, he's in there, undefeated, still English champion. There's Callum a few Johnson. of them. Yeah, uh, Callum Johnson. There's loads of boys. Depends if what network they're with, obviously, is if they're going to get made. But like you said, the Anthony Yard and um, Boatsy fight is a good fight. I'd like to see where Yard is now and if they've made any changes because what they've got um, Yard and Linden 2 coming up shortly, no? Is that not in October? The same night as Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder. Yes, yeah, so that's the night of October. Yeah, so, I mean, it's definitely interesting, man. But look, out of these guys at the minute, you know, obviously everyone talks about Watsi being um, one of the standout guys. Obviously, he, he's done a lot of stuff. He's won this and won that. But look, come Saturday night, he's got the proof is in the pudding. If he gets past this kid, we know that he's the truth, you know, and that he's on the way to being, you know, in the right, you know, being in the corners of the realms of the names you need to be around. But like you said, the English, uh, English side of things, there's just, there's just amazing fights. And I think a lot of these guys can beat each other on any given night, you know, if it's either certain power, if it's boxing IQ. Uh, like you said, Craig Richards, hell of a fighter. He's he's a, he's a guy that people he's the he's the he's the like uh, the silent assassin, you know. He went up there, he faced the boogeyman in um, Bibble. Everyone thought he was going to get smashed. Done an amazing job. Could have even won that fight, um, uh, you know, if 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 he kind of pushed it a little bit in the end part. But listen, what, how's that? You got you know on your record when you you know when everything's said and done. Everyone's talking about the boogeyman Bibble bashing this person doing this to say I've done the the ten or twelve whatever it was rounds. I can't remember it now. And um, you know. You know, not disrespecting myself, fighting for a world title and just coming up short, getting it on split or whatever decision or, you know, I just can't remember what it was. But he saw the final bell. There's a lot of guys didn't and don't see the yeah. final bell with Bivol and people like Batavia, you know, better be of, depends what, whatever way you want to call it, because some people call it different names, you know what I mean? But that yeah, love, yeah. light heavyweight division is, is crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah. Mate, um, I'm going to let you crack on. I need to crack on as well. Okay. But uh, listen, it's always good. And we, we go again, we go all again this week. I'm sure we've got some more yeah. names in the pipeline as well. So we'll catch up very soon. Cool. No worries, man. See you later, buddy. <laughs>